You see, they had a sale on white coats at Macy's this <laughs> week. You know, I was all the way in the back, and I, I don't see real well, so I wish I'd have brought my GPS. It would have been a hell of a lot easier to get up here. <laughs> you know, before I get started tonight, folks, I, uh, I just want to make a confession to all of you. I might have a slight drinking problem. This morning, my wife asked me to toast some bread for her, so I raised my wine glass and said, here's the bread, baby. I wanted to reward myself this week, so I poured a well-earned glass of wine to celebrate the end of a really hard week, and then I realized it was Tuesday morning. My wife and I had a date this week, and she walked in the room wearing a new dress. She goes, honey, does this dress make me look fat? I said, honey, does this suit make me look stupid? <laughs> you guys know the answer to that one, right? I went to see the dentist this week. He looked at my mouth. He said, Patrick, you've got the biggest cavity I've ever seen. You've got the biggest cavity I've ever seen. I said, doctor, you didn't have to repeat it. I heard you the first time. He said, I didn't repeat it. It was an echo. <laughs> I have to tell you, honestly, I hate getting old, you know. So hard. Some mornings I just wake up grumpy. Other mornings I let her sleep. <laughs> now there goes my wine for the rest of the day. <laughs> no, really, like, when you get old, you guys know this. I mean, you lose your vigor, your vim, you don't have the same energy. Last week, my wife said to me, Honey, let's go upstairs and make love. I said, Pick one, baby. I can't do both. <laughs> I had a talk with a friend of mine last week, and he goes, You know, Patrick, you've been married a long time. He said, But you call your wife sweetheart, honey, and darling. He goes, What's your secret? I said, I don't. Let me tell you, a few years ago, I forgot her name, and now I'm afraid to ask. <laughs> Brunette, redhead and a blonde walk into a bar. The bartender looks at the brunette. He goes, what would you like? She goes, I'll have a um, G&T. He goes, what's that? She goes, a gin and tonic. Looks at the redhead, what would you like? She goes, I'll have an S&W. He said, what's that? He goes, she goes, scotch and water. He looks at the blonde. He said, what would you like? She goes, I'll have a 15. He goes, what's a 15? She rolls her eyes and sighs and goes, duh, a seven and seven. <laughs> Sorry. Guy goes in a bank to rob it. He's wearing one of those bandanas, you know. It slips a little bit, so he looks at the first teller. He says, did you see my face? The guy goes, I just caught a glimpse. Bang, he shoots him dead. He looks at the second teller. He says, did you see my face? He goes, uh, just a little bit. Bang, he shoots him dead. There's a Jewish man with his wife. He says, sir, did you see my face? The guy goes, no, I didn't, but my wife did. <laughs> I try to poke fun at everybody, you know. <laughs> Two blondes are walking down the street. One says to the other one, Hey, look at that dog with one eye. Your friend goes, Where? <laughs> <laughs> there was a gal in my high school. She was so popular that she turned 21 before she realized that cars had front seats. <laughs> there was a couple of ladies in the Oasis were talking to each other and one says, you know that new guy that moved in down the street, he asked me out for a date. She goes, I know you went out with him last week, so I wanted to ask you, what was it like? She says, well, I'll be honest with you. He was punctually at seven o'clock at my door and he was wearing a nice suit. I wore a nice new dress. He brought me beautiful flowers. He took my arm and gently walked me outside. There was a uniformed chauffeur with a limousine. We went to the nicest restaurant in town. We had lobster, caviar, champagne, had a couple of after dinner drinks. Then I took him back to my place and I'll tell you, he became an animal. He ripped my new dress off and had his way with me right there on the sofa. Her friend says, so you're saying I shouldn't go out with him? She says, no, I'm just saying wear an old dress. <laughs> I 
was on a business trip. One time I called home, my little daughter answered in a whisper. She went, hello? I said, honey, it's your daddy. Let me talk to your mommy. She goes, you can't, daddy. She's busy. I said, well, let me talk to your brother. She goes, you can't, daddy. He's busy too. And daddy, there's two policemen in the house. I said, two policemen? Only talk to one of them. She goes, you can't, daddy. They're busy too. I said, honey, what are they all doing? She says, looking for me. <laughs> my phone one time and the person says is this Mr. Wyan? I said yes it is. They said can you come down to the school right away and pick up your son? I said oh no what's he done this time? They said nothing but it's getting close to midnight. <laughs> so I got a new puppy for my wife and I thought it was a pretty good trade. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. <laughs> I'm really sorry for that one. Good girl. So I put the puppy in the car. We came down to the uh, shopping center there, and it was a hot day, so I cracked the window about that much. Left the dog in the car, but I wanted the dog to get used to staying in the car without me. So after I locked the car, I was backing away, and I said, Stay, stay. Do you hear me? Stay. At that point, this drunk is walking behind me, and he goes, Excuse me, sir, why don't you just put it in the park? <laughs> I called my lawyer last week. I said, hey, how much would you charge me to answer three questions? He said, $400. I said, that's really expensive, isn't it? He goes, yes, it is. What's your third question? <laughs> There was a lady in uh, New Orleans and she heard about this famous fortune teller, so she went to see her. It was dark in there and the fortune teller looks down at her crystal ball and she gets this grave look across her face. She goes, ma'am, I, I hate to tell you this, but you're gonna have to get used to being a widow. Your husband's gonna die a terrible and violent death. The woman is visibly shaken. She looks down at the candle and down at her hands and she's got a nose, so. She takes a few deep breaths to compose herself and she looks back at the fortune teller and she goes, I have to ask you one question. She goes, of course. She said, will I be acquitted? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Jose worked over at the uh, post office. He was in charge of illegible addresses and one day he got, he got a letter and it was addressed to God. So he opened it up and he read it and said, Dear God, I'm an 83-year-old woman living in the Oasis. I have no family. Some, somebody last week stole my purse. I had $100 in it. She goes, I, that's all the money I have till I get my next pension check. She goes, and Christmas is in two days, and I invited my friend over for Christmas dinner, but now I can't even afford to buy dinner. Lord, there's nobody else I can turn to. Please help me. Sincerely, Edna. So he's moved by this letter. He gets all of his coworkers together, and they all chip in, and they come up with $95. So he puts in an envelope, he sends it to her. They all felt really good about this good deed they did. Three days later, they get another letter addressed to God in the same scrawled handwriting. He gets his fellow workers together and he opens it up and it says, Dear God, thank you so much for answering my prayer and sending me the money. Without you, Lord, I wouldn't have had this wonderful dinner I had with my friend. And by the way, Lord, the money was $5 short. I think those thieves at the post office took it. <laughs> so there was a guy in uh, Ireland named Murphy. What was his name? Murphy. Murphy. Just want to make sure you're awake over there. <laughs> so Murphy, he's not too bright, but he works really hard and becomes this wonderful portrait painter. Everybody comes from all around to get their portrait done by Murphy. Well, one day this limousine pulls out, and this blonde actress from America gets out. She says, Murphy, I want you to paint me in the nude, and I'll give you $100,000. Murphy says, well, I've never had an offer like that before. I've got to talk to me missus. So he goes in and talks to his wife. They discuss the pros and cons of it, the ethics. He comes back out, and he says, well, I will be able to paint you in the nude for $100,000, but one condition. And she says, what's that, Murphy? He says, I've got to keep me socks on so I have a place to wipe me brushes. <laughs> so the guy with the Oasis, he's 
on his deathbed, he's only got hours to live, but he smells chocolate chip cookies. This guy loves chocolate chip cookies. So with his last dying energy, he crawls out of bed, he crawls across the floor, down the stairs and into the kitchen where his wife is making chocolate chip cookies. He sees the platter up there and he reaches up for one smack. She hits him in the back of the hand. She goes, don't touch those, those are for the funeral. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sorry, I had to do that. So I was sitting at the bar last week with a friend of mine and he gives me the elbow and he points and he goes, look at those two guys over there, in 10 years that's gonna be us. I said, you idiot, that's a mirror. <laughs> Another time I was sitting in the bar, I had a drink in front of me and this big burly biker dude walks up, he grabs my drink, he tosses it down with one gulp. He goes, there, I drank your drink. What are you going to do about it? I said, actually, I started to cry. <laughs> he said, you know, I hate to see a grown man cry. Don't do that. And I said, you don't understand. This is probably the worst day of my life. I was late for a meeting at work. My boss fired me. I went out to get in my car. It was gone. I had no insurance on it. I took a cab home. I left my wallet in the cab. I walked in my house. My wife is doing, you know what, with my best friend. My dog came over and bit me on the leg. So I came into this bar hoping to end it all, so I ordered a drink, I put the cyanide capsule in the drink, and as it's dissolving, you came out and drank it. But enough about my day, how's your day? <laughs> Little eight-year-old Kevin, he's in the foyer of the church, and he's looking up at this plaque. The pastor comes over and he says, Alex, how are you? He goes, I'm fine, pastor. He says, but pastor, what's this plaque with all the names on it with the little flags next to it? The pastor says, well, Alex, this is a memorial to all the young men and women that have died in the service. Little Alex looks up with a tear in his eye and choked in his voice and he goes, pastor, was it the nine o'clock of the 11 o'clock service? <laughs> Yeah, I was in church a week later and some friends of mine and the pastor says, all right, anybody out there with special needs, come on up now and we'll pray for you. My friend Leroy went up. Leroy says, pastor, I'd like you to pray for my hearing. Pastor reaches out, he puts one finger on Leroy's ear, the other finger on the hand on his head. He starts praying up a blue streak. He's got the whole congregation praying for Leroy. After a few minutes he goes, Leroy, how's your hearing now? Leroy says, I don't know, it's not till next Thursday. <laughs> Who's the lady that said she owned a Chihuahua dog in here? Oh, me. Oh, there you go. Okay, you'll like the next joke. Right, okay. So these two ladies walk into dogs in New York City, and it's a hot day, and they pass the bar, and one of them says, let's go in here and have a cool drink. She goes, they're not going to let us in here with the dogs. She goes, follow my lead. So she walks in, sure enough, the bartender says, lady, we don't allow dogs in here. And she goes, I'm blind, this is my C&I dog. He goes, oh, I'm sorry, please have a seat, what can I get you? A minute later, her friend walks in. Again, he says, lady, we don't allow dogs in here. She goes, I'm blind, this is my C&I dog. He goes, lady, it's a chihuahua. She goes, what, they gave me a chihuahua? <laughs> So this wealthy local prominent man, uh, he was having an affair with an Italian lady and she became with child and told him. And he said, look, I, I can't ruin my reputation and my wife, she'd kill me. He goes, I'll give you a million dollars. I want you to go to Italy, have the baby over there. And as soon as you have it, you let me know and I'll send you child support. She goes, well, that's great, okay, but how am I gonna let you know the baby's born? He says, be very discreet send me a plain postcard and just write spaghetti on it. And as soon as I get that, I'll send the child support. She says, okay. Seven months later, he comes home from work and his wife says, honey, you got this uh, weird postcard. He looks at it, he turns white and he falls on the floor and faints. His wife picks it up, she looks at it and says, spaghetti, 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 spaghetti. <laughs> Three with meatballs, two without, send lots more sauce.
after 50 years of wondering why I didn't look like my younger brother or sister, I finally worked up the courage to ask my mom. I said, Mom, was I adopted? She said, yes, you were. And she started crying softly. And she said, but it didn't work out, so they brought you back. <laughs> I heard recently that uh, Al Sharpton and Jesse Jackson were going to be preaching in a church in L.A. And I thought, oh, i got to hear that. So I went over there. I no sooner sat down, but Al Sharpton put his hand on my left shoulder and he goes, By the glory of God, you will walk today. I said, I'm not paralyzed. Five minutes later, Jesse Jackson came over and put his hand on my other shoulder. He goes, By the glory of our Father Jesus, you will walk today. I said, hey, I'm fine. No problem. Well, after the sermon, I walked out of the church, and lo and behold, my car was gone. <laughs> you know, my, my wife and I travel a lot, and uh, we always try to stay in really nice hotels. But one time, I got this coupon. I, I went with a cheap deal. Don't ever do that, folks. No sooner did I check into the hotel and got in my room on the ninth floor, I called back down and says, hey, I got a leak in my sink. The guy said, go ahead. <laughs> I called down two hours later. I said, hey, I need a maintenance guy up here right now. He said, what's the problem? I said, my wife and I are having a fight. She wants to jump out the window. He goes, sir, that's a personal problem. I said, listen, you idiot. The window's stuck. I can't get it open. That's a maintenance problem. <laughs> I flew out of LAX recently and I walked up to the counter and I put my bag up there and the woman looks at it and she looks at me and she goes, you overweight? And I went, will you dye your hair too? <laughs> my little uh, grandson came to me recently and he said, Papa, can you make a sound like a frog? I said, a frog? Why? He says, well, Grandma says as soon as you croak, we're all going to Hawaii. <laughs> Anybody been to that new uh, Stater Brothers store over there? Yeah. Great store. As soon as they opened, a guy from the Oasis walked into the um, produce department. He says, I want to buy half a head of lettuce. The kid says to him, sir, we only help sell whole heads of lettuce. He goes, listen, I want a half a head of lettuce. The kid says, well, let me go in back and talk to my manager. He goes in the back, his manager says, what's the problem? He says, some idiot out there wants to buy half a head of lettuce. And he turns around, the guy's right behind him. So he says, and this kind gentleman is graciously offering to buy the other half. <laughs> so they solve the problem. The customer walks out. The manager looks at the kid. He goes, you know, you got yourself out of a tough jam there by thinking quick on your feet. He says, we like that. Where are you from, son? He goes, I'm from Canada, sir. He goes, well, why'd you come down here from Canada? He goes, oh, there's nothing on Canada but prostitutes and hockey players. The manager says, my wife's from Canada. He goes, really? What team did she play for? <laughs> if there's any Canadians here, I do apologize. <laughs> A lady walks into the pharmacy, and the pharmacist says, can I help you? She goes, yes, I want to buy some cyanide. He goes, cyanide? What would you want cyanide for? She goes, I want to murder my husband. He goes, lady, I can't be a part of that. You're not getting any cyanide from this store. She reaches in her purse. She pulls out a picture and gives it to him. He looks at it. It's his wife making love to her husband. He goes, oh, my God. Why didn't you tell me you had a prescription? <laughs> The guy comes home early from work one day and his wife is sobbing. He goes, honey, what's the matter? She goes, I had to call the pharmacy three times this morning to get through and when I finally did, the pharmacist insulted me terribly. He goes, I'll see about that. Drives his car down to the drugstore, he walks in, he goes like this and the pharmacist goes, wait a minute. Before you say anything, I want you to hear my side of the story. This morning, my alarm clock didn't go off, so I was late. I didn't have a chance to eat anything. I ran out the door. I slammed the door. I realized I'd locked my keys inside the house, so I had to break a window to get my keys. 
I'm hurrying to work, and a policeman pulls him over, pulls me over, gives me a speeding ticket. He said, then two miles from the store, I had a flat tire with no spare. I'm starting to walk to the store, and it starts raining. He goes, I finally get to the store. There's 10 angry people out there wanting to get in. So I open the door, and I let him in, and I'm starting to work with him, and the phone's ringing. He goes, I needed some money, so I opened the cash register. I banged a roll of quarters on there, and they fell all over the floor. The phone's still ringing away. He said, I bent down to pick up the quarters, and when I came back up, I hit my head on the cash register drawer. I fell back against the perfume counter, and half the bottles fell on the floor and broke. He goes, I'm sitting there in the middle of all this chaos, and the phone's now ringing off the hook. He said, I reached up, and I took the phone, and yes, sir, it was your wife. She wanted to know how to use a rectal thermometer, and as God is my witness, that's all I did was tell her. <laughs> Hey, I've had a lot of fun up here tonight. It's been a pleasure. I hope you guys did too. Thank you. Thanks very much. Hey, take another, take another bow.